Hi, I'm Dina Moses, and this video is about general ergonomics and weaving, but also it sort of goes along with the waffle weave towels, um, the kit number seven. And I just want to talk a little bit about body position, hand position while weaving. Um, so the first thing is I'm on a baby wolf, and ergonomics is going to be a little bit different with any loom you use. But you always want to be high enough on your loom bench that with your shoulders completely relaxed, your elbows clear the breast beam and preferably are an inch to two inches higher than the breast beam. And that means that you can kind of relax your body down to the loom as opposed to trying to lift up to the loom. Um, so I'm on a bench, I have a pad on the bench and I'm pushed way up against the loom, all right? Um, and then my hands, when I hold the shuttle, I know that there's, you know, different people do this different ways. I've been weaving for 35 years. Um, my body's doing fine and I'm weaving hard production. So I hold the shuttle with my hands facing down. It's like as if you're going to go lift something up, right? It's just the natural hand position. Um, and I kind of curl my hands a little bit around the shuttle. And I'm going to throw the shuttle right on the shuttle race. I'm going to start with just a plain weave. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to throw the shuttle. If I have it, you know, if my project's a little bit smaller than the loom, I kind of catch it on the reed right here and sort of angle it in. Um, and it's, still, it's, it's anchored down. I'm not throwing it in midair. Okay, so like that. Feet. Um, and the other thing is, and this can vary based on what you're weaving, how wide it is, how tight your bobbins, things like that are. But if you need to tension the bobbin a little bit, when you catch it, you put your finger right there. But notice how I'm not clamping and pulling, all right? I'm just kind of letting it move. I'm just slowing it down a little bit. Okay. Move the shuttle. Um, the other thing I want to show you about this is that is is the relationship of when I'm changing my feet to how I'm beating. Because um, a lot of people, they, they want it broken down. Weavers, new weavers want it broken down. So you throw the shuttle, do you beat before you change feet? Do you beat after you change feet? When do you push the beater towards you? When do you push the beater back? My thought about this is that you kind of, if you let your body find that motion, you will find it and in a way, it's a little bit like walking or riding a bicycle. You don't, if you break it down to movement by movement by movement, it's hard for your body to do it all. So at some point, you know, try the different steps. I can break it down for you, but really at some point you also want to turn off that little piece in your mind and just kind of practice. Um, so what's actually happening while I'm weaving is I throw the shuttle. Right? And, and once I catch the shuttle, I'm grabbing the beater bar, right? And then I am pushing, as I push the beater bar back, my feet are changing. So by the time I'm pushing the beater bar away from me, my feet are already in the other position. It's not a separate movement. Touch. And this is even a little bit broken down. here just to show you what it looks like. I notice when I start, look. Notice how when I start being in rhythm with it, um, my hands get closer into my body, right? So when you're separating out the different movements, you know, like you can bring this out, but then, when you really kind of tighten things up, when you get into rhythm and you tighten things up, you keep this close to it. Um, and I want to just talk a little bit about weaver's angle while we're here. Um, so a lot of weavers break it down, right? You throw the shuttle, right? And then you put this at this exact angle and you fix your salvage and then you beat. And theoretically, there's just enough to work its way back in. The thing is that if you keep your yarn slack here, it's naturally going to pull back and you don't really have to do that. Notice how I'm not clamping. That's why I said don't clamp and pull, right? I'm not clamping here. I'm not keeping this under tension. I'm keeping this loose. But the other thing, so that's part of why I don't feel the need for a weaver's angle. 
But the other part of it is that when I start beating, like my shuttle's here. So if I don't, I'm not pulling this back here and then starting beating, right? Like I've already got that angle built into what I'm doing. And it's just a natural part of how things go. So I'm going to end this video here. And um, the next video, I'm going to show you what my feet are doing with my hands so that you can kind of get a sense of that. All right. So thank you so much for watching.